Section 9.7, Molecular Orbitals. Some aspects of bonding are not explained by Lewis structures, um, the VSEPR theory, or hybridization. So some of the more, more interesting things that you can't answer with these would be like, why does oxygen magnetic? Or why is anything magnetic? Or why are some molecules colored and others are not colored? So to answer these, we use a molecular orbital theory. So we've looked at, we know what atomic orbitals are. That is, remember, it's the, it's the probability that electrons will be in certain places. Um, and, and if you remember, each orbital can contain two electrons with opposite spins. Each orbital has definite energy. Uh, you can use contour diagrams, like energy contour diagrams, to talk about its density, um, like how much likely is it here or there. Well, you can do the same with molecular orbitals. It's just in, instead of using an atom, talking about where the electrons are on an atom, you're talking about where the electrons are in a molecule. So once atoms have come together and joined together, those electrons now have a more particular region and space that they're likely to be because they're mostly in bonds. Okay, so if you can describe it with um, essentially a, a and instead of atomic orbitals, your molecular orbitals, some of the information that you gain can answer the more complicated questions. So the big difference is that it's not an atom where you have like S's and P's and D's and F's. It's not an atom, it's a molecule. So we're talking about electrons from two or more different atoms making a bond. Okay, so the easy one would be to use hydrogen because hydrogen only has one electron from each. So if I have a case here where I've got uh, one hydrogen from, or one electron from each of the hydrogens, if you were to um, put this in in the equation that we that we've been talking about before the big ugly equation looking for density you'll see that you're going to get two answers i don't remember if you remember graphing um, graphing um, something with a square like x squared equals you end up with two answers you'll end up with a positive answer uh, like what's the square root of six Square root of six, or square root of thirty-six. Square root of thirty-six is six times six, or negative six times negative six. Both of those are true. So when you do math problems, sometimes you get multiple answers. Well, this is the case here. You're going to get a region where where they're going to add up, and you get a a region in space between the two nuclei where most of the electron densities between the two nuclei, and that would be a bond. We know that when you have electrons between the two nucleus that you have a bond. The other one, the negative answer I guess that you get is where this is the region in between the electrons or between the nucleus and you're going to have zero probability of finding any electrons there. That's called, this would be a bonding, this is called a bonding um, or, orbital and this is an antibonding. So antibonding meaning there's no that there's no electrons there in between the bond. Okay, so that's the first kind of weird thing that it's going to be breaking up into two layers. Notice too that if energy is going from here to here, here's the energy level for the two electrons uh, or the two pro, uh, hydrogen ions by itself where you have electrons. Um, when the when the electrons are in between both nucleus it's actually more stable because it's being held tight by two sets of nucleus rather than just one set of nucleus here. So it's actually at a lower, more stable energy level when, when you make a bond. It's more stable for hydrogen gas to make a bond than it is for hydrogen um, ions to be by themselves. That's why you see hydrogen always is diatomic, okay? Because it's more, it's more energetically appropriate. It will be more... Uh, lower energy, and so you'll see it all the time, okay? All right, so, so this is how you do a molecular or orbital diagram. Here is one atom, okay?
Okay, so I've got a hydrogen. It means I've got a 1s, and that's all I've got. I've got the 1s here. And here is the hydrogen for this. I've got the opposite spin, 1s. Remember, in order to make a bond, I have to have... I have to have opposite spins when those two uh, electrons are sharing a room. They have to be of opposite spins. So I'm going to take one electron from here, one electron from here, and I'm going to start filling the bottom one first. So I'm going to fill the, the, the S1S. This is called sigma 1S, the sig, just like a sigma bond, and the 1S showing that those electrons that are in that orbital are from the 1S orbitals of the atomic orbital. So this is the 1s, this is the 1s. So when they come together, the molecular orbital is called the sigma 1s. Okay. Well, I'm done. I've filled it up. And so I'm going to have the molecular orbital looks like that. I have a sigma 1s. And there isn't any more electrons to give. So when I look and see, oh, this orbital is actually more stable than the originals, I bet you hydrogen will always form an H2 uh, and be diatomic because it's, it will always tend towards the lowest energy. You're never going to have something, you know, things don't fall up. They always fall down. They always fall towards the lowest energy. Same thing here. These electrons will always find each other in, a, in an attempt to be more stable um, as a molecule than they were as atoms or as ions. So bond order, what you do when you do bond order is you are going to say uh, the bond order is one half of the bonding, all the bonding um, orbitals minus all the antibonding orbitals. Okay. All right. So I've got bonding orbitals. I've got two. Antibonding orbitals, I have zero. So two minus zero is two. One half of two is a one. When I have a bonding order of one, it's showing me that I have a single bond. Okay. So when I have a bond order of one, it's a single bond. When I have a bond order of two, I have a double bond. When I have a bond order of three, I have a triple bond. If I have a bond order of zero, I have no bond. No bond will, will exist. You can't make a bond. Okay, the two, the two atoms won't come together to form a bond. So let's look at, at helium. Okay, helium is 1s2, and helium would be 1s2. Now, helium, remember, is a noble gas, and a noble gas doesn't make compounds. There's no need for them to make compounds. They're already very, very stable. That's why you call it noble, because they're nose in the air. They don't, they don't associate even with themselves. So if I have helium, I have 1s2. Okay, well, here's helium that is joining with 1s2. So what am I going to do? I'm going to start by filling the lowest energy level and then go keep going high until I run out of electrons. All right, so... I'm going to start here. I'm going to take I'm going to take this electron and put it here. Put it down on the bottom. I'm going to take the the, the corresponding electron over here and put it on the bottom. So those two go here. Then I'm going to take the remaining this one here put it up, this one here, put it up. Okay, so now my molecular diagram is showing me that I've got my sigma 1s is full, and my sigma star 1s is also full. So the first one, the bottom one is the, is the bonding molecular orbital, and the other one is the antibonding, antibonding molecular orbital. All right, so let's see what happens. Well, let's look at bond order. Bond order is going to be one half of all of the bo the bonding electrons minus all the antibonding. Okay, so bonding, I've got one, two. I've got two there in the lower one minus 
and I've got two in the top one. So one half of zero is zero, so the bond order of zero. That means that there is no bond. Helium will not uh, unite with itself. Okay, so just here, there's information that you didn't have with Lewis structures. You, you wouldn't know what to do with Lewis structures to try to make a bond. You wouldn't know how to do it with the VSPR because you don't have any places. You don't, even with hybrid orbitals, you don't have a room to share because everything is full. Uh, with this, you're seeing also that there would be no bond between helium and helium. You would have a bond between hydrogen. You had a bond order of one, so it's a single bond. Helium, there's no bond at all. So you can put two atoms together and say, will it form a double bond? Will it form a single bond? Will it form a triple bond? Um, and you can, you can do that using molecular orbital theory. So we're going to do that in the next couple uh, sections.